Hey guys, it's Iman and Christina from, from Our, our Rich Journey. Journey. So if you've been keeping up with our channel, you know that we live in Japan and we've lived on and off in Japan for about eight years. And still to this day, there are things that surprise us about this country. So on today's show, we're going to go over 10 things that surprised us the most about living in Japan. The first thing is trash separation. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so Japan is really a very small island if you look at it, and there's not a lot of resources or places to place trash. So a lot of times they burn their trash. And in Japan, you have to separate your trash into burnable and non-burnable piles. But it just doesn't stop at that. No, it, do it does not. Because there are subcategories that you need to separate your trash into. So, for example, Let's say you have a plastic bottle. You'll take the plastic bottle, but you'll take the top off the bottle, and those two will need to be in a separated trash bin. And not only that, you take a wrapper from the bottle and you take that off and that goes in a separate trash bin as well. And trash is collected daily, depending on what type of category it fits into. Number two are vending machines. If you've never been to Japan, you don't appreciate this fact. There are vending machines literally on every corner. And not only is just not only is there a vending machine, but there can be tens, 20, 30 vending machines on one corner. And the vending machines will have anything from your typical soft drinks to cigarettes to electronics, anything you can imagine. Number three is Japan has a lot of seasonal food. So if you get used to a particular item that you really like during the winter, for example, you may come back in the next season and it's no longer available. Yeah, and we're not talking about fruit. We're talking about like candy, we're talking about chips, we're talking about anything that you could imagine. So Kit Kats are really big here for some reason and they're seasonal. So you can have like a strawberry Kit Kat during strawberry season. Cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. Yeah. And then you'll never see that Kit Kat again. So we tend to stock up on things that we really like because we know that we might not see it again. Number four are fireworks. Now, obviously there's no 4th of July in Japan, but every little city has their own fireworks show over the summer. And these fireworks shows are like an event. The community comes out and they make it a very long, drawn out thing. Now the first fireworks show we went to, we thought it was gonna be like, you know, a 20 minute show. It was like an hour and a half of fireworks. I mean, my neck was getting tired looking up at all these fireworks, but it was probably one of the most beautiful events I have ever seen. Yes, yeah, so it's not uncommon to go to a fireworks show in Japan and have the show last an hour or longer. Number five is that every car in Japan has an assigned parking spot. When you go to rent a house or buy a house in Japan, you have to pay for the Japanese police to come out to your home and measure the parking spot and then give you a ticket or a permit that will allow you to park your car at your own home. So this is very interesting because you cannot own a car unless that car has a spot. This is great in Japan. Because of the limited amount of space you don't have people with more cars than they need, or really more cars than they, that they can keep. So number six has to do with how the Japanese communicate. And they communicate very differently than Americans do. And it was something that we didn't really pick up initially, but the longer you're here, you pick up on these very subtle things. And in this particular example, it's how the Japanese say no. Now in America, you can say no. No way, I'm not doing it. You can express that in various forms, and it's definitive. But here in Japan, there are degrees of saying no that where people don't come right out and say no. My favorite way that, that, they, that they say no is by turning their head and going, mm. it's a very polite way for, for them to express to you, don't ask me anymore, or no. And number seven is safety. Yes. When we first moved to Japan over eight years ago, actually, we were shocked by mm -hmm. the amount of very, very little kids mm -hmm. walking to school completely on their own. Oh, on the bus, on the train. These are like four and five year old kids walking the streets alone. <laughs> I wouldn't let my kid in the US go to the end of the driveway 
But here, these kids are traveling a very long distance to elementary school. Now, the reason why it works here is that the community kind of looks out for these kids. And they do that by labeling the kids with these little yellow hats and uh, sometimes these, like these vests. And the kids typically follow the same path to school every day. So the community that's out is, is, is looking out for them. There are people at the intersection crossing for them. But this is how they're, they're teaching their children also independence. Because they go from their, from their home to school every day without any distractions. But, you know, the safety in Japan is also more than just about uh, kids walking to and from school. Violent crime in Japan is, is essentially non-existent. I mean, it does exist, but it's on such a minor level. And petty theft or stealing, anything like that, it's almost unheard of. Yes, I want to give you an example. Mm -hmm. So we went out about a year ago. We went to this big festival and we went to pay for something and I left my wallet full of my money, all my credit cards, my IDs, I left it there. And I didn't realize that I left it there for maybe about 40 minutes later. I went back to the place and it wasn't there and I was searching around. I was really concerned that I had lost all this money and I found out that someone had turned it into the police. I went to the police station, they had me identify myself and what was in there, and I looked into my wallet and every single thing was still there. All my money, all my credit cards, my identification, no one touched it. Number eight are earthquakes. Now, we're from California and we've been through a couple of earthquakes, but only a couple, okay? In Japan, there are 1,500 a year. And there have been months that we've been here and we've felt you know, four or five in that month. But they are, they are so frequent and they are so small that you almost ignore them. It's not, really the, it's not really until a big one hits that you're kind of startled by it. But earthquakes are quite common in Japan. Number nine has to do with the food. I think a lot of people, when they think about Japan, of course they're thinking about sushi. But there is a huge variety of food in Japan. It's not just Japanese food. They have Italian food, they have great Mexican food. Mm -hmm. They have all different- Indian food. Oh, Indian, Indian food, even American food. Mm -hmm. It's just a huge variety that I think people don't really realize because they think it's just going to be sushi or other traditional Japanese foods. Yeah, so we bring this up because it's, it's it, your taste buds will not go into shock here in Japan. If there's something that you're accustomed to eating back in whatever country you're from, you will find it here and you will find it in abundance. And our final shock in terms of moving to Japan was the cost of living. Mm. Now a lot of people think that living in Japan is super expensive and we did a whole video on the cost of living in Japan but if you watch that video you'll see that the cost of living in Japan is actually very reasonable. Oh it's very reasonable. Yeah you know that that surprises people all the time especially what we pay for our car, for rent. Actually we don't pay rent, we rent, live rent free but the cost of rent here. All of these things that you would think would be extremely expensive are very reasonable here. Those are the 10 shocking things that we found when we moved to Japan. Now, if you've been to Japan before and you find things shocking or surprising as well, leave a comment below so other people can read it. And if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and join, join the, the journey. journey.